Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about four cards that are ridiculously priced given what they are. And it is not surprising, but a lot of cards on the reserve list have gone up in price. All four of these are on the reserve list, so they cannot be reprinted again. But having played during all of these sets, I can tell you there would be no one who played the card, or I guess did not play the card, who would believe that one day this card would be $5. So let's start with Orgbog Justice. It is on the reserve list. It costs double black. Target opponent chooses and buries a number of creatures he or she controls equal to the number of creatures put in your graveyard from play this turn. Very, very, it depends on the circumstance. It is kind of a combat trick, or I guess end of combat trick. And maybe you play it before and I don't know. It just never felt very good to me. And I'm not sure what deck would want it. The card has gone up from $0.10 cents to $5 overnight. And it won't be $5 anymore, but it also won't be $0.10. Cents. And that's what a spike on a reserve list card does. Before the spike, no one knows what the card even exists. Now everyone knows that this is used to be a $5 card, price of memory holding on something like a reserve list card more heavily than other cards. Let's say we meet halfway, it's $2.50, a buy list is for a dollar. That's not bad for a card that used to be worthless. Yes, it's on a reserve list, but still. Still, 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 still. Uh, interesting to note what its top price is. And let's see where it goes. All right, the dark was a very bad time in Magic the Gathering. People were leaving the game left and right. Uh, there was not... So people say that Chronicles was the worst time. That's not true. Chronicles was good for most players. Like, I don't know... Again, I didn't... My allowance was $5 a week. And I would have to... If I, to buy the Pokemon movie, I would have to save up all my allowance. I had to uh, help mow the lawn. I had to do laundry and dishes and all these chores to get my $5 a week. If I wanted to go to see the movie, it would cost like $10. If I want to get popcorn, it cost $15. So maybe uh, I didn't have that much money. But Chronicles, I remember being great. I was like, great, Chronicles happened. I can now afford some magic cards. I didn't have any friends. I mean, all my friends were in elementary school. So like, why would we care? Or like sixth grade, I think. No, I went with Chronicles. Mm, elementary school still. But like, we didn't have any money. So people thought that Chronicles was bad. Like that's what historically people are saying. But as a kid who didn't have allowance money, I thought Chronicles was amazing. What I didn't like was the dark. And I didn't like the dark because all the card, the art was crappy. The card mechanics are crappy. And literally you were playing fungus. I mean, there was no dragons, there's no unicorn. Maybe there was a unicorn or was that later? That was Portal maybe. No, it was Ice Age. There was not that many unicorns historically. There's no dragons. There's no angels. Let me see. The Dark Ice Age had an angel, Seraph. And uh, did the Dark have any angels that I'm missing? I mean, it was just a terrible time in Magic. So people say Chronicles is bad. You've never lived through the Dark. The Dark was just terrible artwork, terrible mechanics, terrible cards. People, like the best deck was like Elvis Farmer farming fungus. I mean, it's insane, right? All right, speaking of cards with lots and lots of text. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I remember um, having this card, and it was like, oh, okay. I say it's what's also not a good time in Magic. Like, I don't know why Chronicles was pinpointed as the death of Magic. There were many other times that I personally felt in my playgroup, which is not, I mean, that's, an, it's not, going to be apl applied to every other play group, but in my play group, I felt the Ice Age was really bad. The Dark was like, incredibly bad. And I don't know why people focus on Chronicles so much as like the worst set ever. Chronicles for a little kid was amazing because you didn't care. There was no 
you weren't going to go to a tournament as an elementary school kid. You didn't care that the card was worth twenty dollars. You were actually just happy that Nicol Bolas was reprinted and this cool, really dragon dude could now be added to your deck for relatively cheap money. Right? I'm pretty sure all the Elder Dragons were reprinted and that upset a lot of people who had original copies of it. But for the people who didn't, who had allowances of $5 or less a week, we couldn't. I could never afford an Elder Dragon before the reprint or Nicol Bolas. And I don't remember Nicol Bolas being the really bad one. Uh, or the really villain. I remember there was another one that was really, was like the villain. Nico Bullis just like had a book. He just looked like an avid reader. But anyway, back to uh, Ice Cauldron. This card sucks. <laughs> like, you know. I, I, I don't know how to explain this to you, but if you play during Ice Aids and anyone, your opponent pulled out this card, you would just be like, all right, so you concede? And your opponent would be like, yeah, I concede. Reserve list. I mean, it's on a reserve list. All right. One card that is not on a reserve list that has spiked a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton is this common from Raving Knights. Now, let me read you what it does. I think it's one white. I don't know. Is it two white or one? One white, a regular. So cost two for one, two, Smith. So the Smith doesn't have any attributes like soldiers or angels or like that. And it's protection from red. It is $75. <laughs> oh, man. I think someone's going to buy Narwhals out soon. I would just be my hunch, right? Because if this dude can be $75, there's no reason Narwhals should not be $75. Because at least Narwhals is kind of a funny joke, a funny prank. This is not even funny. Like This is just a random dude buying out all this card. And now it's $75. Now you might be like, who would ever? But the question many of you have is, how are you going to sell it? Well, here's an interesting fact. Tamirian Fiend and Coasting Falls, and all those Homeland cards that someone spiked, they buy lists for a lot more than what I bought them at. Currently. When I mean a lot more, I mean a multiplier of. So if I bought Norway, it was a 20 cents, 25 cents a piece. Norwales can now be buy listed at my local game store for $0.55. Cents. So I, quote, doubled, right? So if I had 10,000 copies, I would have made, well, no. If I had $10,000 worth of Norwales, I would have made $10,000 in cash. Not that the store would ever take that many Norwales, but still, it would be interesting. And like I said, in my other store model, I don't know if I... Posted all my jobs. I might have posted all my jobs because whatever. I am really, really into altering cards. And one of the cards we're going to alter is Norway. So like having $10,000 of Norway kind of makes sense if I can sell them. I believe I can. I just got to alter them. And then, you know, I have buyers ready. They just want unique artwork. So hopefully I can find that person. This week is just advertising for my website slash hiring people. Actually, it's not even advertising for my website because my website is not ready. So don't go on the website because it looks really bad. I need to spend time on my website. Maybe like today's Saturday. I'm hoping Sunday. Sunday, Sophie's coming in to do some social media. But I'm hoping that there's not too much I need to worry about Saturday. Wednesday, we travel. Monday, we travel. Thursday, we travel. Which brings me to Friday. Yeah, hopefully I have time Friday, Saturday next week to work on this stuff. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.